Hey everybody, happy 1 a.m. after a 12-hour workday, and there is nowhere I would rather be than narrating Pokemon matches for you guys. It is Callus Invitational 3 content, and we have Blightbringer and TDK in round 1 action. Uh, these are two players that are probably not among the big names or the highlight names for the tour, as far as ADV is concerned anyway. But these are both dangerous players to watch for. Uh, TDK is one of the most talented, sought-after, expensive new-gen players that everybody on Smogon, especially in newer gens, really, really respects and looks up to. Blightbringer's kind of the opposite. He's been around forever. He does play a bit of Gen 7, but he's all over the place. He's a strong DPP back in the day. He plays GSC very well. He plays ADV, of course. He does a little bit of everything, and he's been playing for a long time. So these are both guys who might be under the radar and have potential to do some damage, and this could very well end up being a good series. I do want to say just real quick before we begin that while I have been trying to make a conscious effort to bring these games to you within 24 hours of them happening and also more specifically in the order in which they happen in real time sometimes it doesn't work out that way there was another set Soul Wind against Lycomedes that did happen before this in real time but that set is to be narrated by Disno and he either hasn't done it yet, or he simply has not sent it to me yet. So that's why it isn't up. But it will be as soon as I can. In the meantime, this set also happened today. So let's get into it. Blightbringer's on the bottom. He's got a T-Tar lead. TDK is on the top with a Metagross. It's a pullback to Skarm. And that is an immediate boom to take it down. And it, it's the one-hit KO, so you would think that either is a really weird Skarm or much more likely simply a choice ban meta. Uh, the one for one trade there is fine Pokemon wise but the noteworthy thing is that Blightbringer presumably cannot get spikes down now but actually now that we see Claydol maybe that's not as important as I initially thought that it was since TDK had a spinner in the back anyway so maybe TDK was trying to hit a water or something other than Skarm. It's not bad to hit Skarm it's just not as good as it would have been if TDK did not have a spinner. So Fast and Furious here. A lot of things with heavy damage already. We saw T-Tar focus punch into Doll and get a crit. The Zapdos here is a bit banged up. Gonna BP out and goes to the weakened Clay Doll into the T-Tar. Goes HP Grass here. So unusual set. He's got focus punch HP Grass. The Focus Punch makes you almost think that it's like a subset. It still could be in theory, but it also could be a special tar that happens to have Focus Punch. Wow, is that another Endeavor Pert? That poke has been, for whatever reason, it's been so popular in this tour so far. I mean, Swampert in general is popular, but that's nothing new. It always has been because it's just such a good and important staple in competitive ADV, but... For whatever reason, specifically Endeavor Pert has been very, very popular in this tour. He shows Roar, so we now essentially know the full set. We haven't actually seen Hydro Pump yet, or Surf, but the last move is going to be a Water, and there it is, Hydro Pump. And Blissey's going to respond with Soft Boiled here. So Blightbringer does have the lead. Endeavor there, 33%. S-Toss back to pop the sub. Endeavor Pert, of course, has Salic Berry, so he's not going to have leftovers or anything else. Sub and S-Toss again. Swampert getting itself very low. He'll eat the Salic Berry here. Speed will rise. Hydro Pump is going to leave Blissey at 1%. She will retaliate and kill via Seismic Toss, but Blissey's going to go down to the sand. So that ends up being an even trade. And we find ourselves now in a 5-3, to three, or sorry, a 4-3, to three, but that becomes a 4-2 to two as a self-destruct is a ton to T-Tar, but does not kill it. Zapdos going for the Thunderbolt kill, Blightbringer not allowing that, his last poke was a previously unrevealed Swampert, blanking it. Zapdos immediately changes it up to Hidden Power Grass, Gengar resists that as it comes in. T-Tar comes in, Ice Punch there would have killed Zapdos. See what T-Tar has here. He does not have leftovers. 
pulls it back to Zapdos here. That comes in on an HP Grass, but the same problem remains. The faster Gengar still has Ice Punch. T-Tar comes in on that again. A Freeze kicks in, but it gets remedied by a Lumberry. DD Lum, the standard set these days, that looks to be what we're looking at here. Straight Rock Slide takes out the opposing T-Tower that was already very, very weak thanks to that self-destruct. Here's Dragon Dance and Ice Beam, respectively. It is an over-prediction for Blightbringer. TDK fishing for desperation flinches here. He finds one, but the Rock Slide underwhelming at 19%. Here's another attempt. He does not find it now, and this game is all but over. Yes, Swampert can and will die to HP Grass, but there is nothing preventing the faster Gengar from coming in, landing the Ice Punch, and bringing Game 1 home for Blightbringer. That is exactly what happens. He'll take the 1-0 lead, and Game 2 will be coming up next. But if you liked it, thumbs up to let me know, show some support, leave a comment if you wish. Look forward to Game 2 coming up next.